see the numbers going on. It's a beautiful day at Hudson's Fields where we have a battle of two um, great Capital League teams, Spalding, Crimson Tide, and the Hazen Wildcats. I'm Mike Baker. I'm here with Keith, Keith Zendick filling in, both of us filling in for the voice of the Hazen Wildcats sports team, Lance Hall, who has promised he'll be here for um, later innings in the game. But beautiful day. We've got temperatures in the high 80s, and after um, being really cold last week, we got a beautiful day for baseball. And thanks, Keith, for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for asking. I'm glad to fill in. I know it's big shoes to fill in, but uh, I'll do my best. And we have Andrew Menard on the mound for the Wildcats, um, who are 9-0, and um, facing the six in number one in Division Three against uh, Spalding, Crimson Tide at 6-1, and one, who are number two in Division Two. Menard with a good start. And a bit inside by Menard, one and one. And Menard ahead, one and two. Hazen has played already twice this week and beating Danville 12 to 10 and North Country 6 to 3. And that one's fought back by McAllister, who's also their second baseman. And Spalding is coming in off a 10-2 um, win over Thetford. There's a shot out to center field, driving Baker back. And a nice catch in center field by Baker. Very well hit by McAllister. Baker able to go back on it and make the catch in deep center. Spalding's one loss of the year came um, early in the season to Division I St. J Academy. So Spalding, a really, really good baseball team. From what I understand with Spalding, uh our outfield's gonna get a lot of work today. Yeah, I agree. I heard they're a good hitting team. That's right. Andrew's coming off a good outing at Danville earlier in the week. He pitched four innings of, uh, of shutout ball. Yeah, and that was really impressive. It was. Yeah, really impressive outing for Menard. And this looks like for um, Spalding Kinnery, their catcher, Fouled hard down the right hand side. Two and two count. Got a high pop up. Revard calling and makes a catch. Two away. That's a good start for the Wildcats. Really is. Menard's really throwing strikes, hitting the strike zone. I think the, the key for Andrew is, is if he can uh, get his breaking ball to come in for a strike. Yeah, and he had that going against Danville the other day. Yeah, he sure so. did. That'll keep these guys off, off balance. Oh. Hopefully we'll get more pop-ups like that. Yeah, for sure. And Arsenal hits one in the gap. 
Baker running it down. Good job by the Wildcats getting it in quickly and holding him to a double, but that was another well hit ball by Spalding. Again, that was Arsenal, their shortstop. And their right fielder, Wilson, now up to bat. Bernard keeping a close eye at Arsenal at second base. Good pitch from Menard. Lucky to have Keith with us today, who also is an umpire. Um, so he has really good knowledge of the game. Good pick, uh, pick off attempt. And he's back in safely. Have you seen a lot of games other than hazing games this year? Have you seen many? A uh, handful of games. Yeah. Uh, mostly hazing games. Yeah. And just missing inside. One count. <laughs> Menard just missing, just missing. Big strike right there. That was. Full count here. The runner at second will likely be in motion. That was a pretty good play by James Montgomery, keeping it in front of him. He's been pretty solid behind the plate, hasn't he, this year, Keith? He, he, sure, he surely has. This looks like McNamara, the DH up to bat. We'll see if we get to see his arm on the... Yes. This yep. runner takes off. Yes, very good arm for Montgomery. Line drive down the right field line. It's trouble for Hazen. And two runs in for Spaulding on that line drive down the right field line. That was a nice piece of hitting, putting it down the line like that. Really was, was went with the pitch. And up is Parker, their left fielder. Keith, we went from, from watching games in hats and gloves last week to almost 90 degrees here today. What a difference. There was no in between this year. It went from blanket weather to <laughs> umbrella no. in the shade weather. Oh, it's amazing. Sunscreen and black flies. Yes. <laughs> Oh, good pitch by Menard, getting in on his hands, throw to first. And that is the end of the half, first half of the inning with um, Spalding ahead 3-0. to zero.
quick um, quick reading of our sponsors here. Um, this game is sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance 793-7388. Call the doctor for your, all your property needs. You are watching HCTV channel 1080, www.hctv.us. First inning, Tyson hoping to use some of that great speed of his to get on base to start the inning. Tyson's been hitting the ball well the last, this past week. Yeah, he really has. He also made two really good defensive plays in the North Country game in the, the seventh inning to help preserve the win. Davison in his normal defensive position of second base today. And a good off-speed pitch there for Spalding's pitcher, Keel. And Davison goes down on strikes on a good pitch from Keel. Tyler Revard steps in. Revard's been hitting the ball very solidly of late. Not missing inside to even the count at one and one. Pop up towards the second baseman and under it and caught. Two outs for Hazen. And up comes Jazz Zendik. Jazz has been playing really well this year. Um, he is from Craftsbury, Vermont. Played on U32's championship team last year. And good eye there. He's uh, been really glad to uh, get back to Hazen and play with these guys. Yeah, yeah. I think they're really glad to have him back here for sure. He had the opportunity in, uh, in middle school to play with play with most of this team, the majority of this team, and uh, then through pandemic and everything else, it was, uh, yes. took him a while, but he's glad to be back and contribute. Yep. Oh, for sure. And a pop-up just out of play. Yeah, I have a memory of him at one of those middle school games down at St. J. <coughs> at Legion Field hitting a shot out of there. Um, that's kind of my biggest memory of Jazz when he was in middle school, so it's great to have him back as a senior. We have a 2-2 count here. That was a good job by Zendik fouling off the off-speed pitch. Uh, nice pitch there. And after one, we have Spalding Crimson Tide two, Hazen Wildcat zero. And we head to the top of the second inning with Bakken leading off. Thank you. 
Hard line drive to center field by Bakken. Quickly picked up by Baker and into Davison, but a solid single. And again, trying to mention sponsors here. This game is sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports 4725522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Man Maintenance 7937388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You are watching HCTV Channel 1080, www.hctv.us. And their first baseman, Hawkins, is up now for Spalding. Runner at first is Bakkend. The pitch from Menard to start. It would be definitely helpful for Andrew to, to be pitching from ahead. Oh, for sure. And the pitch getting away there and uh, hustling down to second is Bakken. Great job by Montgomery trying to keep it in front of him. Menard ahead in the count now would really like a strikeout here. Shot up the middle and the runner will be held at third. And first and third now for Spaulding. As Chase steps to the plate. Chase is playing center field today for Spaulding. We'll see, Key, if they send the runner right away or see what happens here. I was wondering the same thing, if they're going to test James out on this one. Yeah, yep. Just missing inside from Menard. And pop up on the right side. Gould looking to settle under her. Tag. And nice catch over there by Gould, but heads up running from, from Spalding scoring on the play. Now have a runner at second with one out. Good play by Asia, but very heads up base running for Spalding, tagging up and scoring on that. Now the umpires will have a discussion to see if that was really caught. There seems to be a little discrepancy in that. Coach Howard asking them to talk about the call. What did could you see on that key if he held that or I said no catch on that. Rose gonna go back to first and third. It's it's my fault. They said they didn't catch it. I called the ball ball. My fault. So we'll see here if the uh, if the out stands. Let's go, Grady. Little left, kid. Base hit. Let's go. Let's go. Base hit. Let's go, Grady. Little left. 32. 32. Yeah, 32. Yeah, it looks like he's sending the runners back. And, uh, and Chase will come back to the plate. I guess that was not caught. And Chase will get a second life here at the plate. And that one out of play. Key, it was good to see the umpires talk about that in the end, making the right call. And they, and they worked it out, and uh, hopefully it works out in the Hazen's advantage. Yes, yes. Go, Andrew. 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 Go,
shot to left field and it gets by in left field. Uh, all right. So Spaulding with two runs in, but a good heads up play by Rivard getting the runner that was stuck between second and third base. Well, that's good. They were able to make that air into a uh, into an out there. Yeah, you know, good heads up play. Rounder to deep short. Rivard should have time. And the throw is a little bit low. Great job by Montgomery backing that up. He saved the base with that one. He sure did. That was a great hustle from our catcher. It was a one-handed, or a one, one hop throw to Gould, who almost was able to come up with it. Looked like the runner had it beat, to yeah. even with a good throw. So uh, Andrew's hustle right there definitely paid off. Right, you, or uh, James's hustle. James's, yeah. And you're right, that was a tough play for Rebar to have to make. That was really deep short. He was in, in almost shallow left field when he came up with that. And Kinnery again back at the plate who's catching. Big swing, Montgomery throw to second. And we'll have a stolen base. Just missing from an art, just missing. And that's in there, one and one. Runner is Good job! Heads up running on that one. That really was, that was really was. Did that hit him, Keith? Is it that did. That was uh, off the knee. And now Spaulding will have runners at first and third. And an attempt by Hazen by Montgomery throwing down to the shortstop to see if they could get the third baseman leaning a little bit towards home and good base running at third base as he stayed there. Key, the Spalding team is pretty experienced. When I coached some Little League and coached All-Stars, we played them in 10 and 11 year olds and they actually won the state at that age. So. Very experienced, solid group of baseball players. And that one again, clipping Arsenal. And James Montgomery out to talk with Andrew Menard. Keith, you got to hope um, Hazen can get out of this inning without much more damage and then try to get the bats going. Still er really early in this one. That's right. 
the Wildcats haven't really uh, found themselves in this position yet this year. No, no, they really haven't. And number nine, Wilson, their right fielder, now at the plate. Good pitch by Menard to get get ahead here. And again, another pit, good pitch by Menard to get ahead 0-2. Key, I think games like this are good for teams that are hoping to make a good long run in the playoffs. Having to play with some adversity and from behind is definitely a good thing. Play by Menard. One, two. Come on up. Go, Zach. See you, Go, Fly ball. Shallow right. Oh, it falls in. Falls in. And one run in for Spalding on that. Little blooper into right field. Kind of a no man's land behind, between the um, second baseman and right fielder. Those are the type of plays that can demoralize a team when they have to play deep because they have power hitting, yes. going up against a strong hitting team and then those little bloopers. Oh yes, yep, very tough. Another pop, yes, another pop up right side. Davison looks to get under it and makes the catch. Runner bluffs at third and Davison with a good, good throw in. And Parker, their left fielder up. So we got two now, so we'll uh, see if we can get the third one here. That's a good start. Good start by Menard to get ahead 0-1. That's ripped out to left field. Zendik fights the sun and makes a very nice catch out there. That's another hard hit ball. Glad we got the out on that one. Absolutely. So we go to the bottom of the second with Spalding up five to nothing. <laughs> the bottom of the second we have, again this game is sponsored by Buff Buffalo Mountain Power Sports 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance 793-73888. Call the doctor for all, prop, all your property needs. You are watching HCTV channel 1080 www.hctv.us. You have James Montgomery at the plate. We have Jim on camera today and Keith Zendik. And Mike Baker filling in for Lance Hall. There's a nice hit. Yeah, that's a good, good way to start the inning for Montgomery. Finding a hole. Sharply hit between second and third base. And Jaden Baker, the junior, steps to the plate. And takes strike one. Oh, 
And Jaden playing center field today for the Wildcats. Ground ball to second. And a force at second, but Baker able to beat it out at first. So Montgomery out on the fielder's choice. And up comes Lyle Rooney. It's good to have Rooney back with the bat. He pitched good the other day, didn't he? He sure he did. He's the anchor to that, uh, to the Hazen rotation, that's he, for sure. He really is. No, he pitched well against North Country the other day. It seemed like he got stronger as the game went on. And Baker with some speed at first. See if they'll look to have him run. Snap throw back to first. And Baker goes. And he is thrown out by Canari. Perfect throw right on the money. Yeah, yes. Good throw down. I think the first time Baker's been caught stealing this year. Very good throw by Kennery. I'm not mistaken, that might be the first uh, Hazen runner thrown out at second. Yeah, race. you know, we've had some close calls, but well, that could be, could be the truth. Could be. Hazen normally pretty aggressive on the bases. And the appeal called the ball. And Rooney with a 3 2 count. And that one is dumped into center field by Rooney. Good piece of hitting on a 3 2 count. That's a nice play by number seven, the center fielder. That ball hit the ground and took a sharp, uh, a sharp <laughs> turn there. Yeah, that's a good point, Keith. Very good point. And Andrew Menard at bat. Good pitch in there. Counts one and one. Again, we have good speed at first first base with Lyle Rooney. Um, still nursing a sprained ankle, so kind of be surprised to see him go, but we'll see what Coach Howard has here. Good job by Menard staying with that. And Menard goes down on strikes. After two, it's the Spalding Crimson's tied five, Hazen Wildcats zero. We'll be back for the start of the third inning. Back here at Hudson Fields and Lance Hall back in the house here after a long day of work. Just getting out of work. We had a little staff meeting afterwards, so my apologies for running late, but it looked like, uh, who was the gentleman over here with you doing the call? That was Keith Zendik, his son Jazz plays on the Okay, team. yeah. Excellent baseball player. And it looks like Revard's on the mound here. 
um, after two innings from Menard. Tyler has pitched really well in his last two games, or last three games with two wins and a save in his last three games. So he's really settling in. So it looks like top of the third, Spalding five, good guys zip, huh? Yeah, you know, Spalding teams, just a really good baseball team, as are the Wildcats. Wow. Spalding was, uh, I just learned from Keith, they were runners up last year in the D, for the D2 championship behind U32. Okay. And they're uh, professional to be Owen Kellington. So very good team that Hazen is playing. Or actually, set, shouldn't say professional to be. He has been signed. Wow. Kellington from U32, anyways, had a great season last year, as well as the other Raiders. And Spalding, a def definitely good team, um, losing into the finals to them last year. So we have Bachman, Bach end, the third baseman at bat. So James Montgomery behind the plate. James is behind the plate. He's made some good plays back there already. And Tyler just missing inside and Bakken down to first base on the walk. You're and saying the, the Mahler, Andrew the Mahler Menard was the first two Yes, ends. yeah, and he he pitched pretty well. Um, Spalding just had some good hits there, they, some solid hitting from them. But And we have their first baseman, Hawkins, now up to bat. And there goes the runner. Easily into second. Yep. So Hazen now really trying to keep this one close and hope, hope to get the bats going later on like they're capable of doing. And once they get on, then they have that real aggressive style of base running too. Yes, definitely. Spalding looks like he's got a big team over here. A lot of guys over here milling around. Yeah, they really do, they really do. And I was telling Keith, they pretty experienced team there, you know, playing in the finals last year. Definitely. When I coached Little League All-Stars when our guys were young for Cal West. I remember them having a great 10, 11 year old team that actually won states. Wow. Um, so first and second here for Spalding. He's in hoping to twist a double play here. We're gonna get that first out here at the top of the third. And Chase, the ninth batter up their center fielder. Squares to bunt, has to fight off a high inside pitch by Revert. Very hard to bunt those high inside pitches. Uh, definitely. Very good pitch by Revard to make it tough there. Nice day out here for baseball. It's warm, but we got a little bit of a breeze up here. Oh, it's awesome. Goes down, perfect bunt down. Goes foul. Great smart, very smart pay, play by Gould. Letting it roll foul, making sure it stays foul. That, that would have been trouble. Good play by Gould. Uh, any road construction today out there, Lance, or was it clean sailing? It was clean sailing from Barton right down to here. I just trucked on right down as soon as I punched out. Nice, you got here quick, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I would miss a whole lot. So, Thursday is my late day that I work, and then, like I said, a little bit of a staff meeting afterwards trying to prep the uh, summer people. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a high shot that's gonna drop down in the infield. And easy catch. Yeah, is that, what do we have at short? Trying to trying to see the number. Is, it looks like uh, is that Lyle out there? Number six. Number six, Jim says. I believe that's Lyle. Yep, Lyle it? Rooney. I forgot my clipboard uh, mic. Yeah. I would have had a, at least numbers and names. Yeah. I sometimes had a hard time seeing the numbers out there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Try it in soccer season. Oh, from Partic the roof, yeah, yeah. That's a, you're a ways away. Or particularly when the girls have uh, long hair. Yes, yes, you can't that see is the true. Anyway. Oh. 
And Kennery at the plate. And I also saw Kennery play at the Barry Odd this year on the Spalding team over there. Solid basketball player also. Good hitter and a good arm is, is Spalding's catcher. Oh, that one hurts. Lance, I was looking at my clipboard when that happened. Where did where did it get? It looked like it got him in the thigh. Yeah. Between, I, I want to. It looked like thigh. I was gonna say it was a little high. It def, I didn't. I don't think it was knee. I think it was thigh. Yes. He kind of tried to get it away. Doing okay. Yeah, he'll jog it off. Had to hurt, but at least yeah. the thigh is kind of a meaty area. Yeah, get it, hit. it's the best you place. You tell it hit with a pretty good, you know, thack behind it. Umpire went out to check in with Tyler. Now, when I last saw you, Mike, we were up at Lake Region where the boys went up there. I can't remember. Have they played since? They have played. Yeah, they played twice. They beat Danville on Monday in a good 12 to 2, 12 to 10 win. Um, Slugfest. Was, you know, Hazen seemed to have a comfortable lead, but Danville came back with, I think it was eight runs in the fifth inning to go ahead 8-5. And, you know, Hazen showed a lot of toughness. Um, so I think that was one of the first times they've been behind this year in late innings, and they were able to pull it out 12 to 10. Nice. And, um, so we still have an undefeated season going. Still have an undefeated season. So it fell straight back. And um, they played again on Tuesday against North Country, and that was a 6-3 win with Lyle Rooney playing a, playing a pitching really well. I say Lyle uh, at the Lake Region game had a no-hitter going to the Two outs in the six, right? Yeah, I think I think he did. He was very solid. I know I was standing beside Russ Shoplin, and that's at least what he told me. Two, two outs in the bottom of the six before they got their first hit off. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have him back on the field and being able to hit. Rounder to short. Coming home. Rooney comes home. Good job by Montgomery keeping his foot on the bag. With the the uh, throw a bit offline and, and um, get the force get out at home. Get the force out at home. Good heads up play by Rooney to get the lead runner. So two out now, top of the third. And this is Arsenal hitting their shortstop. For the Got a courtesy runner going in. And it looks like Lewis coming in, number 23. Really a smart move by the Spalding coach trying to keep their catcher fresh and yep. on a hot day like this. Definitely. And this guy went in, looks like a speedster. He looks like he has some wheels. There's a hit down left at foul. Good play by Montgomery behind the plate. Let's go, Trevor. Three and one the count, two out, top of the third. Cats trailing 5-0. Good pitch on the inside paint by Rivard. Two and two the count. Two and two. Arsenal staying alive. Rivard hoping for the strikeout here to end the inning and prevent any damage here from Spalding. All right, base is still loaded for Spalding. Rounder to short. short. 
Oh, what a great play by Rooney at shortstop. Lyle Rooney with a fantastic throw. Had to kind of throw back across his body. That was a long throw as it took him deep. Oh, that was a great play. Yeah, great play by Rooney. So we go to the bottom of the third with Spalding up five to nothing. We'll see if the Wildcats can get the bats here going in the bottom of the third inning. Lance, yeah. you are a professional at reading the sponsors. All I've been right. doing it, but I'm gonna hand you the sheet Sp right here. <laughs> So you are watching Hardwick uh, Hazen uh, Union Wildcat Baseball here. Your varsity boys playing against the Spalding. What is Spalding? Spalding Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide, yes, indeed. Uh, we are sponsored today by the Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. Once again, you can watch us on uh, HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Lance Hall along with Mike Deman Baker. Uh, you what, will what? never, I'm you will never get rid of that name. Glad you haven't really told the story about how that happened. Well, let me so. tell you a little story. Oh, about no, that. here it comes. <laughs> Thetford, wasn't it? I think it was. I uh, think you were Thetford. You, uh, the JV, of course, you are the illustrious JV boys Lake coach. Region. Lake, Lake Region. Was it Lake Region? Yeah, Lake Region, yeah. okay. And uh, I happened to be ambling by the scoring table. I don't know if you knew this or not. I happened to be ambling by the scoring table when you picked up your first tee. And I can't remember what the first tee for. I'm sure it was unjust. It, it wasn't fair at all. It wasn't. It wasn't fair. <laughs> Who do we have at bat right here, number this 13? This is our senior first baseman, Asia Gould. Okay. And I see Mike get uh, teed up for a technical. Wow, Mike got teed up. Wow, that's really something I say to myself. And I did whatever I had to do, and I go back by, and I heard you say something about, well, you know, I've never really gotten one of those before. Referee says, oh, yeah, well, here's another. <laughs> Tees you up, and you're gone. Uh, well, then, of course, it was a spirited game. I think Aaron went over and, and coached yes, the boys. I think you yes. were trailing at the time. Yeah, not my not my proudest moment. The, the boys came back and won the game. Of course, you had to exit the gym for the time. At one point during the comeback, the chant of We Want Baker was echoing through <laughs> the Wildcats den here at Hayes Union High School. Boys came back win. Crowd is jacked. Well, of course, this guy, I don't know who he is. This, is this, guy that, <laughs> this guy that got doing the PA work. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. I don't know who that guy is either. <laughs> and you were always stuck sort of in the middle of the assistant coaches. Of course, by then it was a varsity game, so you could come back out. And the wheels got turning. As Asia takes a ball low. And I ended up sticking it. And all I could think of was, was Mike Ditka. You know, there was the demand, you know. And... Uh, who else was there? Uh, Bobby Heenan. Oh, there's a Good nice shot hit by Asia. Oh, I oh, thought that was going to drop in. Nice place by this play by the second baseman there. So I kind of had that rolling through my head, and then Bobby Heenan, when he always called Goldberg, demand. Bill Goldberg was always demand. So uh, I stuck you at the end of the assistant coaches and introduced you as Mike Duman Baker. <laughs> and the crowd went wild. And my wife told me you were kind of looking at me, shaking your finger at me. I couldn't look up. If I'd have looked up, I was going to start laughing, and I wouldn't have stopped. Well, you know what? It, uh, and the crowd just erupted. Yeah. It could have been wrong, but I even think I saw a laugh out of the varsity refs when you did that. <laughs> uh, and you haven't let me live it down since. You have been the man ever since. And Fenton Meyer with a good swing there, but going down on strikes. Two outs, bottom of the third. I even have you in my phone as Mike Dumman. <laughs> and if I remember right, you got your suspension shortened for that. I did. did I had to. John to talk to, and I had to talk to the VPA, and yeah, I got the uh, second technical got rescinded, so I didn't have to miss it. Two mandatory yeah. two VPA games. So right, because we were sort of sort of towards the end of the season, wasn't it? We we're kind of going towards playoffs. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So, so after I wrote my pleading letter, <laughs> it got rescinded, thankfully. Well, you know, considering those were your first two you'd ever gotten in your career, right? You know, right. to have them come back to back, I think right. they'd probably. Right. Is this Tyson Davison? Tyson Davison. 
swing and a miss. And actually, the ref that gave me those, we kind of get some laughs about it now. When oh, you, you do. Run you into so each you other, so. broke bread and yeah, get 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 some laughs, anyways. <laughs> kind of water under the bridge there. Exactly. You know, I've heat of the moment type thing. Yes. Yeah. Good swing by Davison. Two and two, the count, two outs, bottom of the third. Cats looking to get something going here. And Keel, trail five, nothing. And Keel, a Spalding left-hander, has been really peppering the strike zone today. Kind of a tall, rangy fellow out there. He is. It would be great to get Davison on here with his speed. Tyler Rivard setting on the on-deck circle. Yeah. Tyson will go on. Good at bat by Tyson to reach base there. You hear the dirty ball chant go up. <laughs> Usually a very active Hazen bench. They do like to chat over there. Like I said, all I can think of is the seagulls and Finding Dory. <laughs> or Finding Nemo, actually. <laughs> finding Nemo, I think is the name. Shot straight back to the pitcher. Hit hard. Yes. Good yeah. reflexes. That was a great play by Keel. Rivard hit that on the screws just right back at him. So at the end of three, it is your Hazen Union Wildcats trailing the Spalding Crimson Tide by score of five zip. All right. Okay, top of the fourth, we're back. Who do we have up to bat? We have their right fielder, Wilson, up, up at the plate. Rivard still on the mound. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier, Rivard's last two game, last three games on the mound. He's got two wins and a save, so he's really been pitching well of late. Montgomery out to chat for a moment. It's kind of looked like he struggled a little bit there in the third, though. Yeah. Threw, a lot of, threw a lot of pitches. Yeah. Yeah. Had the bases loaded, but maybe Got out of the gym, yes. Yeah. Thanks to two, two great plays by uh, Lyle Worthy. Boy, that one still going, going away from first base, throwing across his body. That was a great play. And then, then the uh, before that, the heads up play to home. Yes. Pick yep. off the lead runner. Man, these guys get hit. They can. And that's what happened with Menard earlier. He was throwing strikes. They were just hitting, hitting the ball them. well. Reaver just missing. Oh my God, he's so handsome. Got him. Uh, Swinging at that one. Reaver, let that one fly. A little extra on it, it looked like. And low. Full count. A <laughs> oh, little disappointed, Michael. I went down to Walgreens last night and I did not see the queen. <laughs> I think I got that text. Yes. I talked to the king at work today. Oh, so you did see him because he never answered back. I did talk to him. I went in the dirt. Draws the walk. Uh, you know, I saw him long enough to give me a hard time about one thing or the other, you know. Yep. It's hot being out on that crosswalk on days like today. It's brutal. Brutal. And McNamara, number 10 at the plate. McNamara is their DH, DHing for Keel. Hard to believe what? We're less than a month now away from the end of school, right? It's flying right by. It's crazy. Flying right by. Brushed him on the shoulder. Yeah, the play. just barely got him. Runners at first and second now for the Crimson Tide. And a big swing by the left fielder, Parker. Good 
No Again. outs yet here. Again, Hazen hoping to get out of this without any more damage. Nobody. That went high. You know what, I forgot. I've got to tuck my phone way over here on the side. We don't want... I don't need to be dialing any distress calls again today. I think I must have laughed that entire half inning after that happened. And I went home and laughed about it afterwards, yeah. telling the story. Phone just kind of sitting in my cup holder, all of a sudden dials 911. <laughs> And I think if they had a Hardwick television blooper reel, I think, I think that, that might have made it. it. Yeah. I think that might have made it. <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if the audio picked up on it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> runners, oh, runners go. And Menard doesn't make the uh, throw to third, which is a good idea. He had it stolen. Or I should say Montgomery, not Menard. So now the count is three and two, no outs, top of the fourth. Spalding up five zip. Runners on second and third for the Crimson Tide. And he struck him out. Yeah, good pitch by Revert. And number 12, Bakken is up, third baseman. And runners at second and third for Spalding. Chopper on the ground goes foul. Big crowd up here tonight. It's really great. Nice to see. Of course, on day like today. I think there's been some hype for this game with uh, Wildcats being undefeated and Spalding being. Yeah, nice crowd down on the Spalding uh, side. Yeah, Spalding being a great Division II team, so. And just a hop, skip, and a jump from Barry up to here. So. Right, right. One, two. And Revard ahead on the count, one and two. And Revard gets him with a good pitch on the corner. So two out now, Revard once again looking to get himself out of another jam as he had runners, bases loaded last time, runners at second and third this time. Two outs, top of the fourth. And number 14, Hawkins, their first baseman up to bat. Good job by Revard getting ahead. When he does that, Lance, um, Usually is a good result for Hazen. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, high. <laughs> Little nubber back to Revard. Over to Gould for the third out of the inning. Cats once again get out of a jam. Keeping the score at five zip. Now we'll see if we can swing the bats. Sponsors today for this baseball game are Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor. For all your property needs, you're watching HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. On a picture-perfect day for baseball here at Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in Hartford, Vermont, York. Hazen Union Wildcats trailing the Spalding Crimson Tide going into the bottom of the fourth. I am Lance Hall. And alongside, go ahead. Mike Baker. Dem and Demand. <laughs> I'm not going with <laughs> Alongside Mike Demand Baker. What a beautiful day. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the Lake Region game earlier today. Yeah. Or the, the, and uh, you know, that game last Thursday, I don't know if you remember it, we were up on top of the hill. Yeah. Lake Region has a beautiful field. Oh, yeah. But up on that hill, the wind whipping. It was windy. You know, I had yeah, gloves on, chilly. sweatshirt. I had a sweatshirt and a hat. Well, I heard it was potential record-breaking heat today, Lance. Today and tomorrow. and then But next week, back down to below average. But so, so we need something in the middle, like yeah. it was Sunday and Monday. Right. Those were about yeah. as good as it gets. 
But I'm not going to complain about this. I mean, when you live in the shadow of the vortex. You never know. You just take these <laughs> days. <laughs> Could be your last one. You never know. <laughs> and here is Jazz Zendik. Hey, what do you say, 2 1? And Jazz is a little ahead of it. Jazz playing left field for the Wildcats today. I want to thank Jazz's dad once again. What was his first name? How is it pronounced? Keat. Keat? Keat. Zendik for helping out with the call. Nice. Yeah, he came right in and stepped, stepped up to the plate. Oh, yeah. It doesn't take much to replace me. Oh, gee. <laughs> gee. Lance, you are the voice of the Wildcats. <laughs> Uh, baseball is probably my lowest confident sport, you know. Yeah. So I literally am flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, you do a, right do a nice job for sure. I appreciate it. And I got to tell you, Mike, I have thoroughly enjoyed sitting here talking with you during these games. Well, thanks. I mean, we kind of drafted you in that first game. <laughs> He's kind of standing there. Hey, Mike, come on over. You want to talk? <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been. You got to admit, Lance. once you get in here and you get rolling, <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? It is. It I, is. I think every guy has like, who, who likes sports and has watched a lot of sports, has an inner sportscaster in him, anyways. <laughs> it is. It's a whole new thing, you know. Whole new. You thing. see the game differently. It, you know? Really. And it's hard. I can't cheer for my kid or yell at him. <laughs> yeah. And James Montgomery up to bat. It's a great way of self-discipline for yes. you. Yes, yeah. And Montgomery going after a high pitch. Oh, and two. One ounce. And Montgomery's really had a solid game behind the plate, Lance. Yes. He's Kept a lot of balls in front of him. and Yeah, a lot of balls in the dirt in front of him. He's doing well. It's a hit to the gap. Yes. He'll easily get one. He's digging for two. Oh, and he's out. Boy, that, I, was, a, that, that was, was aggressive, but. Yeah. Good throw in there. Yeah. Um, looked like he was close to getting under the tag. I didn't look. Was Joe waving him through, or you know, I didn't kind of take off on his own. I didn't catch that. The way it was hit, the way that fielder got over there pretty quickly, I said, I don't know, stretching for twos. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a good play. Yeah. And Jaden Baker at the plate. He reached on a fielder's choice earlier. He was playing center field and made a nice catch going back earlier in the game. Go, go, go. That one goes foul. One, one count. Now Isaiah coming back home soon? Yes, yeah, actually Saturday he's got his, um, he's got his commencement at Berkshire Institute for Christian Studies where he's going. So he'll be back Sunday and hoping to spend a week or two with his buddies. Open to see Cody. I'm sure that he will be at the Hall household. Yeah, he's it's one of the things I saw him the last time that he was looking forward to yeah. spending some time with Cody. Absolutely. I do not, has he seen Cody's truck yet? I don't think he has. Oh, yes. I don't think he has. And Baker goes down swinging. So we'll move along to the fifth inning now with the Cats still trailing. Five zip here from Hudson Fields. All right, top of the fifth. Crimson Tide at bat now. Rivard still on the mound. And Spalding Chase, their center fielder, is up. Tyler jumps out front, 0-2. Oh be nice to see Tyler get like a 1-2-3 inning here. That would be good. Good for his pitch count, good yeah. for his confidence. Struck him out. Good start. 
And back to the top of the order with our second baseman, McAllister. Shot back, gets by Tyler, gets by Rooney into the outfield. Yeah. For a single. That was a good piece of hitting. Just got underneath Tyler's glove, just by Lyle. Yeah. Well placed. Yeah, nothing they could do about that. Definitely no play on it. Looks like Montgomery calls time. Got an issue with something over here? Yeah. Uh, a little like bodily a little, fluids. Yeah. You know, catchers really get beat up. They do. That is a, it is hot out there for everybody today, but behind the plate with those, that gear on catching. Right in the dirt there. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to feel the coolness of the grass there. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> is, uh, Hazen's athletic trainer, Vin, is wrapping him up. Here we go, guys. And now we're back to the action. Let's go, Let's go. Tyler. Go, Let's go. Tyler. 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 Compared to his last three outings, he yeah. is. He's, he's been amazing in his last three outings, and he's managed to fight out of it today, but it, it, he's not quite as sharp as he has been. Oh, there's there's a shot. Oh, good running catch by Baker. Nice catch. Yeah. Those are the type of plays why I could never play baseball. Like, I, could, I couldn't make that play in a million years. And he made it look pretty darn easy. He did. He got a good jump on it and a good read. And I, I wouldn't have, not in a million years. You know, Jaden, when he was, he was younger, really liked playing the infield. But as he's got older, he really likes it out there in center field. So two outs now, one and oh the counts. Notice today, Rivard is not afraid to try to hit the inside of the plate. He he's, yeah. he's not afraid to work inside. Three and oh, runner on second. And top of the fifth. Rivard looking to battle back here. Runner goes to third, throw down. Not in time. Yeah, that was a good jump, good jump by that Kennery over there, so number four. Now we see Spalding with the sort of aggressive base running that Hazen is known for. Bernard. High throw. Run scores. McAllister into score. Runner goes to second. And you can tell Menard frustrated at himself. And, uh, yeah, I think he was just trying to overpower it, you know. Yeah. And that tends to happen when you've got speed like a lot of the Spalding runners. They get down that first baseline pretty fast. And it makes you feel, feel hurried over there as an infielder. And Wilson up next, their right fielder. So two outs, run Disco. Yeah, there goes the run up on the board now. Yeah. 
ball goes through, runner's gonna go to third. So we've got another runner now. In prime scoring position with two outs. Yeah, timing was a little off on that play. In there for a strike. Yeah, good start from Revert. Two one count here. Two two. Tyler looking to throw a strike and try and get out of this inning with just that one run scored. Yeah. I don't think the Hazen bats have been shut out this late in the game before this say. year, so really hoping to get those bats going. This will be the test. Good play by Davison. Double clutch. And he gets him at first. Nice play by Davison. So the Spalding Crimson Tide tack on another run to make it six zip in their half of the fifth. You're watching Hazen Union Wildcat Baseball. I always want to say basketball. <laughs> Hazen Union Wildcat Baseball here from beautiful Hudson Fields in Hardwick, Vermont, Hazen Union High School. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics. And DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. Once again, we're on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Lance Hall along with Mike Daman Baker. <laughs> hey, Lance, do you have any ideas about between all the years of doing basketball, baseball, soccer, mm. approximate range of how many games you've done for HCTV? Not a clue. Uh, I know, I think this past year I did... Yeah, of course, doing home games, I want to say I did 19 or 20 basketball games. Um, I believe I did the majority of the soccer games, which is what? How many soccer games? Six, seven apiece at home? You Probably know, at least home seven games. at home, yeah, I would say. So, you know, there's 20, you know, call it 25 between. So if I've done 20. 7 14. Call it 35 games between the two sports because we only started doing baseball last year. 35 games times five years is. Well, then I had the one year I didn't do. I didn't do basketball when I was working. I bet you're. Well, that's 35 times 5. Uh, 70, 175. Yeah. Probably 100. So 150. That's great. Or so. Yeah, you know? that's great. Uh, guesstimate. A true guesstimate. You know, just sort of off the top of our heads here. That's great. Yeah. Well, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I... And Rooney Skies went to center. Could be trouble, but second baseman goes out and makes a good catch. Rooney had actually singled to center his first at bat, so it's now one for two on the day. And Andrew Menard up to bat. See if the mauler can swing the lumber here. Yes. Yeah, and I never knew it, st it all started until Leaf left this past spring there. We were talking that last basketball game. It all started with a call that he made to Tim Whitney looking for somebody to cover basketball because Tim had done it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and Tim said, no, oh, if you can't find anybody, I'll do it, but why don't you give Lance a call? I remember the night Leaf called me. Watched a lot of sports. I've never called it. Uh, yeah, oh, it's, you know, to be a part of, the, the first year I called you, the boys won the championship in basketball. Um, That's you know, a great soccer, way to start. Yeah, That's, yeah. 
the soccer teams have always done stellar. Um, you know, call it that, that girls run that we had there a couple years back. You know, they played that game on Halloween. Right. And we had another home playoff game here. The boys have had some great playoff games. Um, and Menard does a good, great a job. Lot. Yeah, that was great. I mean, to be, to be a part of that is just, it's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know the community really um, appreciates Hardwick Community Television. Yeah, advising I mean, these sporting events, and you and the community really supports you being there for all these games. So. That's the other thing we got to point out. You know, we have a great crew. You know, we, we couldn't be us without the crew. You know, we got Jim over here on camera today. My apologies to Jim. I haven't talked about him at all. <laughs> Jim on camera. It's usually Liz, but you know, uh, Jim and, and Liz and, and Leaf, of course, really took the HCTV coverage to a whole nother level. Oh yeah, yep. Um, Griff has always been around. James Salvis. Um. You know, it's so great. Some of this stuff is archived too, because I've you can go back and watch. Being a uh, nostalgic uh, shot by Aisha. Yeah, uh, double play. Good unassisted go. double play. But yeah, as a father, you know, feeling nostalgic. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go back and watch some of Isaiah's games when he was younger. It's and I'll tell you, one game I wish I could have called. And I know James did a fantastic job with it. Um, but I really wish I could have called Isaiah's 1,000 point game. Well, well you know, Isaiah has definitely mentioned that. He, he, and that was uh, no disrespect to James. He did great. But yeah. Isaiah has that relationship with you. And right, right. He was, he, I remember he was, talking to him the yeah. game before. I think I was there for the game before when, when he was trying to get it. I remember talking to him during the JV game. And I said, just don't. Don't even think about it. Just go out and play your game <laughs> and just have fun. This is yeah. what it's all about, you know. It, it'll be there. You're going to get it. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, but just relax along the way and, and, and enjoy the ride. Is it was yeah. what I told him, you know. And that was good advice because he was kind of at that point. He's like, I don't want to think about it. I right. just want to get it over with. Exactly. You get to that point where it's like, okay, let, it's like a monkey on your back. You're really, you, you want to, you know. And Coach Coach Hill, he did a great job of not. Isaiah really didn't have an idea of where he was at. Right. And in probably two or three games before that, Aaron, you know, let him let him know where he right. was at and stuff. So, so at least it wasn't a lot of games of that stress, yeah, you know, wondering exactly. wondering that. But he was. And I'll tell you, one of the most thrilling moments I had was uh, Dennis Gore's thousand point. Why wasn't that fun? <sighs> that was amazing. That was a shooting flurry by him at the end of that playoff game. You know, and, and I think you guys playing BFA. I think they put their starters back in, you know, to yeah, try and yeah, yeah. You know, make them earn it, which right. I don't blame them. I right. don't blame them. And, you know, as a coaching staff, we were so excited for him to get it at a home playoff game. And it would have been fun at the odd, too, but a home playoff game with yeah. the community here, it was pretty cool for Dennis. And just the way it came about, what do we have up to the plate here, Mike? We have McNamara, the DH. Top of the six. Uh, you know, he had put up some shots. He put up that one shot that went over into the far corner towards the gym lobby. And who's there but Mike Badger, who I had nicknamed the Hustler. Yes. Who yes. has no business getting a hand on that ball. <laughs> Two arms and over his head, back cross court. Dennis basically catches and releases for the three and nails it for his thousand point. I mean, yeah. He was on fire. I, I will never, you know. There, yeah. There's that moment. There's there's the playoff game where in my first season where Russ Shoplin just took things over. I think it was against Twin Mountain. You know, I mentioned that Twin game. Twin Valley. Yeah. yeah. I just mentioned that game to his parents at a baseball yeah. game recently that he played the game of his life oh, when yeah. we needed, needed it most. Oh. You know, and, and then, you know, then the girls game, uh, you know, Letty Hill and, and uh, Oh, her name escapes me. Um, I'll one, think of it. one of the brown girls? One of the or? brown girls were always fun. No, to the tall girl. Kylie um, Courier? No, no. Um, oh, no I'm, having well, I'm thinking Krista, Krista Sawyer, but it's not Krista. It's the other girl. Uh, oh, I'm going to be so mad. I'll think of it. Tall girl. She got a thousand points too over in Winooski. She was trying for her and ended up getting it in. Oh, oh Becca Whipple. Becca yeah, Whipple. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Becca Whipple, yes. She was a great player. Yeah. And at the bat, um, Parker, their left fielder, 
throw goes by Goulds. And of course all the soccer games. It's uh, That is called a windsock. That is, or like a, a, it's like a baffle. There's a sharp hit over the left. Good job by Zendik getting it in quickly. Boy, that was hit hard. Yeah. Nice play. Yeah, that was heads up by Zendik getting it in. So we got runners at the corners. Nobody out. Top of the six. Cats trailing. Six zip. And the third baseman balkened at the plate. We will uh, see how long it takes for Spaulding to run in this first and third situation. Again, Montgomery with a strong arm at home plate. Let's go. Oh yeah, big boy. Oh, oh yeah. But all in all, Mike, it's it's been a heck of a ride that I'm just getting started on. No, it's it's awesome that you'll be here doing it for years to come. Absolutely. You said you're doing some stuff with the Mountaineers this summer. Yeah, uh, going down there. My first game with them is June 7th, I believe. Uh, and then I'm going to do you know one or two a month after that, between work schedule and everything else. Uh, it was hard to really commit to a lot, but oh, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to being in a ballpark of that size, you know, doing that. Chopper to short. Go to first in time. Scores the run. Spalding pushes their lead to seven zip. Yes, yeah, so I'll be making a trek down to Montpelier. That came as a result of the uh, U32 game the boys played this past winter. Oh, okay. Lady that was at the game, Sue Chaffee, no relation to JJ, I asked her. Uh, she said she gets that a lot. There's a blast from the past yeah, there, JJ Channel Chaffee. 3 Sports anchor. Oh my God, is that a hawk? Um, came up after the game and says, you have a great voice, would you consider doing this? And it took me about a millisecond to say, yeah. Actually, I, I said, let me talk to the fam first. And, I got their blessing and then I went for it. Oh, my Another good play by Montgomery as number 14, Hawkins, their first baseman, is up to bat. Yeah, that sounds fun, Lance. Yeah. That's such a fun venue over there, really. Yeah, yeah, I got to go down and, and see everything go up in the press box and everything back here a few weeks ago. It's awesome. You know, and then of course last year we started doing baseball for the first time and you know, what a run that was. You know, we had our first home playoff game here in, in a long time. I don't even remember exactly when the last one was played before that. That was a great baseball season last it year. It really was. I'm hoping to capitalize on this year because we only lost one senior, you know, yeah. Nathan Choplin. And what would be really nice would be to someday see a softball team come back here to Hazy. You know, they had softball back when I was in school. There was there was softball. You know, Lance, I was doing some walking through Morrisville the other day, Saturday morning, and I popped into the softball game at Peoples where our girls are playing. And yeah. There was a good number of Hazen girls playing that day. Yeah, I mean, we're close. We're close. I would love to see a softball team play. Well, it would be good. Draws the walk. So we have runners at first and second with one out. And their center fielder, Chase, is up to bat. Number nine man in the batting order. Looks like he has some really good speed. Good start from Revert. And Montgomery will go out to talk things over with him. He doesn't have that pitch thing on his wrist where he can no, just call the pitch. No in. pitch comp. <laughs> I think that works well sometimes in the majors, and sometimes I've seen the like technology not work, and yeah. pitchers have to take it off. And everybody comes in the chat on this one. Yes, as we're getting pretty deep into the game here. Yeah, six inning, and Hazen hasn't gone this late without scoring a run in any game this year. So. And hoping to I was going to say, it's hard to be aggressive on the base pass when you can't get anybody yeah, out. Yeah. Spalding pitchers pitch well. Yes. There's a shot out yes. the center. Drops in the gap. Slice, Doesn't score. Slicing away from Baker. Yeah, let's go. Run scores. Eight zip. 
Now, just to get a little background on you, I mean, we talk a lot about me, but let's talk about you for a moment. Now, in school, obviously an athlete, what sports did you play? So I played some basketball, some soccer, and, and I played baseball for a while, but much to my dad's chagrin, I ended up playing golf when I was older, and, and uh, but I had some fun times playing baseball when I was younger. I was played at People's Academy. I was say, you, you went to PA, yeah, correct? Yeah, I was fortunate to play basketball for their legendary coach, Bob Rowe, who's in the VPA Hall of Fame. Nice. And, uh, yeah, basketball was definitely a big sport over there at that time. Um, but I, my senior year, I looked at my dad and I told him I was right because we, we uh, won the state championship in golf and I think baseball lost in the final. So <laughs> well, we were lucky. Both teams are two spring sports were very solid at that time. But Yeah. And then you went to college where? Went to UVM. UVM. Yeah. Oh my god, what an eye. And majored in um double major in phys ed and history there. Oh history too. Okay. History, yeah, yep. Yeah. Wrote a lot of papers in my day there at, <laughs> there at UVM. And back then it was all longhand on paper, well, right? I'm not that old, Lance. Come on. Well, I mean, word processor. Okay, word. All right. Okay, word processor. There you go. All right. Yeah, a lot of uh, written papers there. I actually became friends with our varsity basketball coach, Aaron Hill. There, we always played sports against each other. Okay. Ended up in the same pl classes and got to be friends there at UVM. Excellent. Shot to left center. Is it lighting up Revard now? Yeah. Good throw in by Jazz. Oh, good throw. Nice throw. Good throw. Is that Rooney with that throw? I think yeah. it was Rooney with the relay. The, now the run does score, though. It's 9 zip. Two outs. Uh, Spalding has just come in here and basically kind of put on a clinic for pitching and hitting and fielding. Yeah, really good ball club. And I mean, it's not the fact that Hayes has played bad either. It's just Spalding has played better. Yeah. Again, D2 two school rank, ranked at the top of the standings there in D2. So. Great test for your team. You find your strengths, you find yeah. your weaknesses. Hey, what do you say, Wad? Now you've been at Hardwick Elementary for quite a while too. Yeah, over right? 20 years now. Wow. Yeah. Very fortunate to work in a good school like that with great people and great kids. So I think my introduction to you <laughs> was the night they brought the donkeys in. Oh jeez. Donkey basketball. You know. You had a tough night that night, Mike. I thought at one point you broke something. Uh, <laughs> down the line. Good play by Reverd, keeping it foul. You know, I had one of those try to be macho <laughs> moments, Lance, and <laughs> didn't work for they you. They introduced the donkeys, and two of them were really, they told us were really, really tough guys. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, oh, I'll get on one of those. And I spent more of the time flying off it on the ground <laughs> than I did on the donkey. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the Hazen gym more full than it was that night either. That was I mean, fun. it was to the rafters packed. That was fun. And, uh, so I remember Bonnie DeGoose called up and asked me if I would, again, do announcing for it. I said, sure. And it was nice. The people that did it had a script sort of to go by. You know, and they said, ad-lib what you want, but here's, you know, here's some talking points, which was phenomenal. And uh, as it turned out, it was a husband and wife that had the donkeys, and the wife graduated a year behind me in high school. Her name, when she went to high school, was Letitia Thayer. Oh, okay. I forget, I forget her married name, who, they, who their names were. And I hadn't seen her in, you know, since basically I left high school, graduated. So we had a little class reunion there, and uh, then went out and did the game, and I, I, was, I was scared. My, my knees were shaking. Oh, great. Oh, good try by Montgomery. Trying to get the runner. He did get him. They called him out. Well, you know, I missed it, Lance. He was called out at home plate. I think it was strike three at home. And okay. Yeah, kind of space there for a minute. 
thinking back to riding a donkey. Yes, yes. Um, I, like I said, I was nervous. Uh, the crowd, it was just one of the biggest crowds I had ever seen. That was good, and I can't remember what that benefit was for, but Lance will either. have our sponsors here. And yes, we move to the middle of the six. Uh, Spalding tax on, what, four more runs? Make it nine zip. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hayes and Union Varsity Baseball on HCTV Channel 1080 and streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Jim on camera. Jim's been a camera camera today. I want to get a couple mentions for Jim in here. And uh, Lance Hall alongside Mike Demand Baker as we reminisce the, uh, the life and times of our friendship. <laughs> oh, there's been some good times. It's been a lot of very, very good times. But I'm really happy that he didn't, you didn't come up with, with a nickname for me based on my performance um, playing donkey basketball. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Would have been Crash. <laughs> Mike Crash Baker. I remember you were literally going over that donkey's head and landing hard oh, on a very yeah, unforgiving yeah. gym floor. Yeah, you know, once I hit a few times, I was... Why don't you get bruised once? Uh, you can't bruise again, uh, right? And I was like, why did you try to be macho and ride one of these tough guys? I could be on one that's, uh, you know, prancing along calmly. Yeah, that was fun. That was a good time. And Fenton Meyer will lead off, trying to get the Wildcats on started. Here in the bottom of the six. Cats down to three outs to make something happen. I'm mean, six outs, six, excuse me, six outs. And uh, Fenton is our right fielder today. Fenton Meyer, I'm going to bring this up again because I just found him to be an amazing teammate on the JV boys. He bench. is, he's great. I, I, Very verbal. Yep. I've had a great time coaching him. He's yeah. always encouraging to his teammates and, and just a great a kid that you want to have on your team, yeah. whatever the sport is. Positive. He's very he's good. verbose, but in a very positive right. way. Right. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. He was uh, brought up as part of the championship team and got a as part of that this year. Yeah. Basketball is pretty nice. Benson stays in there and wears it and gets the first As base. Spalding has changed pitchers. Am I correct? We have. Spalding has changed pitchers. Let me look back. We did have a lefty. This guy's right, right? Looking for his number there. Oh, Kennedy. This is number seven, correct, Lance? Yes. Yep, this is Kennedy into the game. And. I heard him say something about seven in for 16. And there he goes back to first. Not in time for the double play. Good hustle down. Davison with his speed, yeah. hard to double up. And I have to say that was a great pitching performance for Keel for Spalding yeah. today. Shout out for him. That is the way a pitcher hopes to pitch. T-Rex, Tyler Revard. Another kid who was three sport athlete, a goalie, fantastic goalie on the varsity boys soccer team. Just an insane player for the for the basketball. I love when people play inside. Tyler plays inside basketball. He, he certainly did. He had a great season. And now I'm here again for baseball. And I was actually thinking about that. That he. Jaden Baker and Fenton Meyer, we could actually call them four sport athletes because they all played on the golf team okay. too. So they doubled up this year, wow. played soccer as their primary sport, but also played in some golf matches. And Reaver gets hit by the pitch. So runners are first and second. Jazz up. 
Once again, we'll give a shout out to his dad, Keith, for calling the first three innings or so with you. Yep. He really stepped in and did a good job. Kind of like me, my first game. Uh, didn't kind of just last minute thing, and yep. he was awesome. Talked to him briefly up in the Lake Region game. Uh, stood there. I was watching that game with Russ Shopland, and uh, Keith was there as well, and uh, had some great conversation with him. Very knowledgeable. Um, I think he's he umpires baseball. I've oh, seen wow. him officiating basketball and soccer, so very knowledgeable. One and one, you count. One out. Throw back to second. Keeping an eye on Davison back there. Yeah. Good speed on the base of Davison. Rivard's a smart base runner, so. And cats are known, the cats are known for being aggressive. They are. I mean, what the heck, are you? are down nine zip, you might as well just play your game. Good cut by Jazz. One and two, you count. And Strike three. Kennedy with some heat there. And James Montgomery's up. James has actually had two base hits today. Second one trying to uh, stretch it into a double. Yeah, but he has hit two balls solidly today. And he was the one who put the big hit on in that last game we did here against what was it, Montpelier? He did, yeah. Let's go. Yep. Two out. Yep. We're getting the runner. Under a lot, lot different circumstances than today, we were freezing that day. Oh, totally different. Fouls that one back. I did like to score a bit better that day, but yes, like yes. we've mentioned over and over again, one of the best teams that will play all year here. Yeah. yeah you bring the, you bring the big boys up, you know. Yeah. And you hope to hang with them for a while. Like I say, you learn your strengths yeah. and your weaknesses. Yeah, the pitch behind, runners will advance. And for Hazen, really helped in soccer, definitely in basketball in the championship run, and yeah. now in baseball, playing in the capital this year, playing, playing a lot of the D2 schools. It's really, really good for our teams. Good job with James trying to go the other way down the right field side. James is from Walden, Vermont. We've had a lot of good athletes come here from Walden over the years. Definitely. Ryan. Tyson's coming in. He's going to score. Davison under the slide. Tyler goes to third, so the Cats on board now, 9-1. to one. Maybe we'll start a little two-out rally here. Yeah, that's just what we needed there. Now, Mike, I'll ask a question that will show my true baseball noviceness of it all. As a hitter, is there a way you can project the ball to like right, left, center? There, there is, there is, yeah. Square your body up, wait, swing early, swing late. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, your stance, square, or open, different things like that. that that um, players can do. but Montgomery strikes out, but not before Hazen does get on the board to make it 9-1. Here at the end of the sixth, so Spalding will be up in the seventh. We'll be back to give you that in just a moment. All right, top of the seventh here. Spalding Crimson Tide taking on your Hazen Union Wildcat boys. Crimson Tide leading by a score of 9-1. to one. Cats did get on board. Bottom of the sixth on a nice play by Tyson Davison. Shot right back to Rebarg. Ricochets out into the field as Rooney couldn't quite get there either. 
Tyler kind of got a glove on it. Uh, well hit Hard. for Arsenal. That was, you talk about exit velo velocity in the MLB. Yeah. That had some exit velocity. He had it right back at him. So. Yes, it did. It was kind of make, make you nervous as a yeah, player. Espe especially after us, you know, like we saw the, uh, I think it was the Montpelier pitcher get hit. Yeah. On the yep. fir like first or second pitch of the game. Yeah. And Tyson line went right, yep. right at it. Yep. And Jaden got one at North Country. He hit did. one off the pitcher's leg over there. And it's, it's just scary. Another reason why I never played baseball. I'll admit, I was scared of the ball. Comes off there hard. Hi, pop up. I think Gould is giving chase. It's kind of he's gonna. That would have been an athletic play to make. Did I hear that Mariano Rivera was at UVM last night for the lacrosse game? You know, Travis Hill sent me a text that said that. I saw it on the news this morning. I guess his son played for the opposing team. Um, I forget the college they played. But uh, UVM ended up winning the lacrosse game. They're going on to play uh, down in Maryland this weekend. Well, that's but, pretty. Uh, that's neat. He was that's there. pretty awesome that Rivera was there. Amazing player. Yeah. So I'm a Red Sox fan through and through, but I got to say Mariana Rivera was amazing and a number one class act. Yes. Yes, he was. Times this year, it's been hard to be a Red Sox fan. <laughs> I'm hearing that. Uh, I have. I started out watching the Blue Jays pretty steadily the first couple of weeks, and I just been busy and just haven't haven't been able to. But got to get back on it. I haven't even looked at the standings lately. Yeah, I heard the, heard the Yankees are winning a lot, so I haven't wanted to look. So. I do know the Yankees took care of my Blue Jays either last week or the week before because I worked with a gentleman who's a Yankees fan, and he was he was telling me about it. <laughs> As I walk in with my Blue Jays cap. And Better Wilson, girls to walk. Yeah, that was Wilson, the right fielder. And... Coming so up next is McNamara, their DH. Men on first and second, nobody out. Top of the seventh. Designated hitter, you say, at bat. Play down, they calling him. Now some controversy here because the umpire looked to call him out and then changed his call to safe. It looked like he was going with the out call. First base coach was saying safe all the way. I don't know if the ball got dropped over there or if it wasn't on or. Yeah, I'm not sure. There isn't what? isn't much protest from the Hazen coaches on it. So yeah. I wonder if he came off the base or something. But So base is loaded. Runner comes. Scores. 10-1. A little bit of, of uh, uh, Coach Rivar giving his opinion of that play. Shot into center. Baker gets it on the hop. Throw in. And more run score. And Spencer's going to go out 12 1. Yeah, looks like Tyler's starting to uh, tire a bit. He's thrown a lot of pitches in this game. He has, and we also have a lot of big games coming up. So. Yep, best to just kind of. But we'll see, he hasn't made the change yet. So being at Hardwick Elementary for 20 years, are you starting to see kids of kids you taught back in the beginning of your career? All I can say about that is I'm getting old, Lance. <laughs> getting old. But it's great. It I'm, is. I'm it is. Very fortunate. Yeah. Say what you want. It's a great community. It is a great community for sure. Oh, 
so supportive of our sports teams. You look at the people out here today, you know, yep. play a game in the Barry Odd Lance, and you know Absolutely. our fans are going to drown the other ones out. Absolutely. That one goes into right. Runner comes home. Another run will score, and they'll wipe the bases. I want to say wipe the bases clean with the guy still at first, but all the others are coming in now. And that was Bakken with the waiting on that pitch and going to right field with it. Good piece of hitting. I mean, another thing we've got. You know, here at Hazen too is a tremendous arts program. Absolutely. Uh, music. Yes. Chorus. You, know, you got the kids that go down to the Tech Center, down to the Moyle, who are doing great things. Uh, so many good things. Yeah. I've heard, I won't, I can't share the details of it, but I forgot, but I think there's some sort of concert going on tonight by possibly the chorus group. Or, Could be, yeah. So, uh, and those always draw a good crowd as yeah, well. Yeah, yep. A lot of talent. A lot of talent in a lot of different places. Yes. And this is Hawkins, our first baseman at the plate. No outs yet, top of the seventh. This one. One out. And a little confusion on that call, too. It looked like safe and then called out. I'm not sure. And the runner's still in sure. second. All right, and now he's and now called he's out. out. All right, much needed out for the Hazen defense here. Definitely. Runner on first, be nice to turn a double play and just get out of here and get our ups. And, and there, speedy center fielder, Chase at bat. I think his name's Chase, because that's probably all you're ever going to do. You're not going to catch him. Yeah. I didn't get first names, I, but he is fast. Oh, that's his last name. That's his last right name, yeah. Still same deal. Yep. <laughs> You know, Lance, I've coached for a long time and it's hard to lose games, so sometimes they can redirect you and refocus you and... Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, good throw, throw by second. Montgomery, got him. Got him, got him. Got him leaning for the second out. Montgomery with that good arm. I, I agree 100%, Mike. You know, there's a saying, you don't really learn anything from doing it right. Right. It's when you make mistakes is when you learn. Yeah. 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 You do it right, you've just done it right. You know, Hazen will be frustrated with the results of this game, but in, in the end, it's not, certainly not the end of the world. No, no, it's, it certainly isn't. There's gonna be more games to play, and you, like I say, you, you learn, and you grow, and you persevere, and this is a, a test of your spirit and your resolve, and yeah, yep. It, it's not, you know, it's how you come back now. It's not what happened, it's how you come back. Right. Exactly. There's another shot. Meyer will play it on the hop. So we got two outs. Hazen looking for that third one. Time right here. Like, looks like Spencer will look to make the change at this point. Second visit out to the mound. go to the senior Tyson Davison. Yeah, like I said earlier, Hazen has not played bad. It's just Spalding's. No, they're good. I 
I think at the end you'll definitely see Spalding in that mix for a D2 championship there. Absolutely. When I checked today, it looked like they were ranked number two behind Linden Institute, who's undefeated. So we still have Linden yet to play in the near future, maybe our last game of the year. So we're playing some of the top D2 teams, which again is definitely a good thing for us. Spalding is a well-coached team that can play ball, that's for sure. Sure can. Davison will throw a few more here, practice throws. See if we can get this third out. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, but you know what? Tonight would be a good barbecue night, you know, something on the grill. Yeah, I was just going to say, we get this game over with. I'm going home and grabbing something to eat because I left straight from work, so I didn't really have time for any dinner. Right? But then you probably did the same thing, right? Well, Came over here right after? I did, I did. I, so let me ask you this. Yes. If I worked at a store in a restaurant, I would want food all the time. Is that <laughs> is that hard? When you're hungry, incredibly, everything looks good. You know, I'll get called up to bag, and everything I'm putting in the bags, I want to eat, you know? When you're hungry, it's incredibly hard. <laughs> when you're full, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, when you're hungry, you just want to eat it all. i tell you, my office is in the gym in Hardwick Elementary, as you know, is right yes. near the cafeteria. And some days, yeah. boy, yeah, the you're smell right coming out of there. Yep. I want to eat everything. Mm -hmm. Those ladies put on some tremendous meals. Oh, they are awesome. Yep, we are very fortunate to have them in our community also. The lunch ladies. Yes. They used to do a little singing. Really? They did. <laughs> Davison delivers. And good pitch by the senior. Davis, Davison, also a golfer and uh, one of the captains of the soccer team this year. Good player, good all around athlete yep. from, from a very athletic family. For sure. Shot, Baker back deep, 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 and he makes a good catch. catch. All right, there's that third out that we're looking for. But not before Spalding puts more runs on the board. Sorry about that, Mike, to make it 13-1 here from Hudson Fields. Hayes Union High School in Hartford, Vermont, our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes and Athletics. And DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hazen Union Sports on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived www.hctv.us. Jim on camera. Lance Hall with the call along. Or actually, I'm not even with the call. I'm just talking. Mike Demand Baker with the call. Me, I'm just hanging today. Am I doing okay, Lance? Did You're I pass the test killing today? It. You're killing it. <laughs> Killing it. Absolutely. Now, once again, I thank you and Keith for stepping in those first few innings. It may happen again next Thursday as well. I believe there's a home game next Thursday, and I'll have to work until 4 again. But I should be here a little bit earlier. We'll have a staff meeting. But, uh, it's great Keith did it. He had yeah. the big smile on his face. Oh, yeah. got, you know, like I say, paused I, and then said, okay. I think every guy who watches sports has an inner sportscaster who sits there and thinks, I can do this, you know? And it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Two guys, two. You know, I think one of the toughest things to learn for me is when, when not to talk and when to talk, you know? That's a, that's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't say too much, don't say too little. That's you know, the thing, you know, do you let it breathe? Do you keep yakking the whole time? Are people tired of my voice yet? Is there some sports casters, some you know, professional ones that I'll see that they're doing like a basketball game and I'll be like, oh no, they talk the whole time. You know, it's, it's hard to know. I like to talk, but I like to let it breathe every yeah. once in a while too. 
And Jaden Baker will lead off for the Wildcats. Made that catch to end the last inning and trying to get something started here. Maybe he'll hit one out past the center fielders. Test him out a little. The only hope. Uh, how about that? Zach yeah. was more to right. Right fielder chases it down. Nice shot yep. by Baker, but the right fielder was able to chase it down. We don't quite have the vortex swirling winds today that we had in that Montpelier game. No, no. And that was Wilson out there making a nice catch on Baker's fly ball. He just missed that one, Lance. Just missed it. Just missed it. And we have Dan DeGrosselier pinch hitting here. And up the middle. Good play by the shortstop. Look like the baller, is it? It is. Our school hockey player here. That's great. It is. Playing up with the Linden team. Straight down the middle for a strike. You know, I believe it was, it was a North, or the uh, Danville game recently that Menard had a big hit in the late innings, driving in a run that he's in desperately needed. So he's done some good things this year at the plate. Oh and two. Hard one to lay off. And there would be impatient. Strike three, and Spalding hands Hazen their first loss of the season by a score of 13 to one. But once again, Spalding a D2 school and a darn good baseball team. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV, Channel 1080 on your cable channel streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Mike Demand Baker, Keith as well. Today, Jim on camera, our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance. 793-7388, uh, call the doctor for all of your property needs. I believe our next home game is next Tuesday. It is. We'll uh, see everyone then. Who are we playing? Well, actually, I think we have one. We have one Saturday. You have one Saturday. Yes, Saturday. I'm not going to be here for that. Oh. I'm out of town that day. There is one coming up Saturday, um, and then Tuesday, and then we play next Thursday. So a little bit of a, a uh, or it might be the following Thursday. I know it's Saturday and Tuesday. Um, so a little bit of a, you know, we'll see some home cooking get us back on our winning ways. Uh, yep. Until then, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Lance. Live every moment. Love every day. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.